Hello. OC, how are you? I am doing great, Mr. Kumi. How is it um, going over there? Yeah, Cyprus is good. Cyprus is good. We yeah, we are grateful for another wonderful day. And I'm so happy to see you and so excited to connect with you. So what's going on today? Uh, everything is um, going well. Just, uh, of course, uh, mostly about today's event. But what's, um, what's it like in Cyprus with the wake of what's happening internationally? What's like like what's what's the atmosphere like over there? Yeah, everything is everything is okay in Cyprus. Um, just just a normal day. We are we are doing we are doing pretty well, and um, we are hoping for the best. We are okay. All right, cool. All right, everyone. Um, welcome to our um, three sixty um, leadership um, network event and. Um, we are really excited to have everyone on board. And, you know, we started last year, we, we have started having different events and it was mostly about, you know, onboarding leaders um, on the continent and seeing ways to um, help young people to be more effective at what they do. Because, you know, leadership must start from within and then it flows from within and then um, has impact without. And one of the key takeaways from leadership has always been responsibility, basically, finding problems around you and deciding to say, okay, I can actually um, solve this problem or taking the initiative and then leading people with a vision to solve a problem. So with that, um, since last year, we've had different events from identity, personal development center. And the idea of all this has just been about how to help us um, keep on our clarity and um, our trajectory as we all evolve and grow into becoming the persons we want to become. And the focus has always been on young people, young people, young people. So um, last month, too, we had um, Kanayo Kanayo, who is um, a barrister and also um, one of the earliest actors in Nigeria. He just shared his journey in the acting industry and also his decision to go back for higher education as a lawyer, as something he had always been passionate about all his life. So the goal of all, all that has always been about, you know, motivating people to tell them that everything and anything is really possible. Today is going to be even more amazing. Today we are having an event and it's stacked on courage. We are currently in a world where a lot of things are happening globally across the continent, you know, literally things are happening at, the, at an international scale. And sometimes we are faced with conditions that makes us question, our, um, question most of our dreams. We have big dreams. You want to go back for your master's, maybe in Harvard, one of school in Stanford, and you are thinking, how would the third world kid who has lived in Africa all his life be able to compete internationally with a lot of the opportunities that are actually available? Now, what we're saying is, yeah, it is very possible. And what we need is courage. Our today's speaker is an amazing person. And I can't wait to glean from the amazing wisdom because I, I to just like, I'm also really waiting to meet him. He's um, um, Captain Komi Afetse. He's um, a U.S. Army officer. Uh, he's an author of the best-selling autobiography on Chasing My Dream, an African immigrant story in America. I'm sure for Nigerians who like to talk about Japa, this is really something to have to look out for. Kuba Fete is also a database systems engineer working for the Defense Information Systems Agency at Pentagon. That's crazy, right? So now we now have a contact with the Pentagon, guys. In the Army Reserve, he is a captain currently serving as a team leader in the 404th Civil Affairs Battalion. Komi was born and raised in Togo, that's in West Africa, and left his country of birth in search of a better life in the United States of America in the March of 2004. After a very difficult start in the US, where he spent his first four months in immigration custody, Komi went on to achieve his American dream and financial independence. As a North Carolina A and T State University graduate, Komi is currently pursuing his master's degree in IT management system at the University of Maryland. Komi affects his remarkable life story is part of a bigger story that is the human resilience and perseverance story. This is a story of hard work, perseverance, resilience, faith, and determination. Komi joined the army at the lowest enlisted rank with no college degree and rose to become an officer. Komi is a motivational speaker and a founder of human development consulting company Afetse Consulting International. I think at this point, we should all just hold our breath because 
already I'm sure you're already blown away. He's a world traveler and public advocate for successful living. He's passionate about sharing his ideas to inspire, educate, and motivate people to achieve their dreams. We're also going to share links to um, his site and also his book on how you can get it. You can actually buy the ebook on Amazon. Look at, they're all available. And this is an amazing caliber of person. And I'm telling you, we are really, really, we just, just prepare your mind to be blown away today. And I know we all have big dreams. We all have dreams that have been keeping us up all our lives. And sometimes fear has always been one of the factors that makes us imagine, is this really possible? So just allow Komi to just come on, talk a bit about what we're going to expect, and then we're going to call our speaker on board. Then he's going to call our speaker on board. So over to you, Komi. Wow, thank you so much, um, Oti. Um, it, it, uh, that, was, that was a wonderful introduction. I'm really, really grateful. Thank you so much for, for that wonderful introduction. And um, indeed, we have a great, a great speaker that we are looking ahead to having today. I know so many persons have, have already been warming up, like what is happening, what are we expecting? <laughs> I tell you, there is, there is so much, so much for tonight that you must not miss. There's so much for tonight that we must not miss. So I want your hearts to be ready and be prepared to glean and hear from our, our great speaker for tonight. So uh, without wasting time, I would like to bring him up on stage. We've, heard it, we've all read his bio and it's a great privilege to have him. And I'll just bring him up on stage so we can see our guest for today. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Marvin and wow. Peter. Thank you for that great introduction. Uh, it so is much, a, a, a privilege to link up with the like-minded of people who are doing, you know, the same thing we're trying to do. So one of the things I, I usually say is this is the best way use of technology, right? Before you have to do things in person. And nowadays with technology, we can actually link up do, regardless of the continent and you know where we are and then just set a time and then mm. share our idea and knowledge and wisdom about our life to help other also because Thank most you. of the time as a human being we all learn from each other right so yes, this is this is the best opportunity uh to do this and i'm very grateful for you guys to invite me here uh, this afternoon wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It, the, the pleasure is all ours. The pleasure is all ours. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really good. Out of your busy schedule and all you do, you just had to spare your time to be here with us. We are really grateful and we appreciate. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, without, without, without taking much of your time, we are just going to go straight into what we have today so the people can really get to hear and, and, and get to hear more from you. Um, firstly, today, we'll we we'll, would we'll like to know more about you and uh, yes. we we'll like the people to to really hear about you from you. We've read your bio, told them yes. a lot about what you do, but yeah. I think there are still some things that could not come in the bio that that could really come out from you directly. So yes. we'd we'll like to know more about you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, my name is Komi uh, Afeti. I'm originally from Togo, West Africa, born and raised uh, until age 24 when I got my opportunity to come to America. So uh, America, coming to America has always been a dream that I think formed in my early years, around maybe 14, 15 years old in school. And I just had this desire to be able to travel and go see this place that, you know, the books and the people who got a chance to go talk about. So I finally got the chance in 2004. I came here, but uh, as soon as I landed, you know, through immigration, I was put in jail and I was facing deportation because of some misunderstanding. Uh, I was coming from Togo, which is French speaking country and at the immigration border, just a basic routine question, right? Uh, not knowing exactly what I'm stepping into, uh, this question just kind of put me straight to jail. And for four months, I had to go in front of the judge uh, to determine if I was eligible to even enter the country and stay here, which I made it through, right? Now, 18 years later, I'm here talking to you, trying to you know, share my story and share what I believe and 
you know, give people a little hope and courage about their own lives, right? Because fundamentally, this is what I believe. If you went through something, uh, it become your duty to share it with other people. So when whenever somebody younger or other background is trying something, come across your message, uh, that can definitely help them, you know, know that they are not alone. Somebody has faced the situation before. So come here first today. Uh, I'm a captain in U.S. Army and I wore so many hats, right? I'm also a database system engineer. Uh, I published my book, Autobiography, which is Chasing My Dream, an uh, African immigrant story in America in 2018. And something that surprised me is like every time that I, I thought that, okay, I published this book, it's been some years now and the story will go away, you know, I get requests from just like you guys like want me to talk about it and it kept going on so it kind of dawned on me to realize that i mean we all have the same passion or sharing the same story all over uh, today i'm here but somebody also maybe today in nigeria or Togo in africa is trying to do what i you know i was able to to do so many years ago and sometimes people just want to hear it again so um, i'm amazed that after almost four years that I published this book, I still get a request to speak about it, my experience. So Komi uh like I, I wear so many hats and, and I just believe that's what you should do. So U.S. Army officer, database system engineer, author, I'm a public speaker. I do events. I do one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. I just try to put it out there because I believe that the purpose of living is not just to sit down there and be comfortable for the rest of your life. It's mm. to do something with yourself and then help others do the same thing. So I believe in a busy life. And I, I always joke to my family. I say, if, you know, life is going to, uh, uh, death is going to come find me very busy. Like in my later years, I'm not going to retire. I'm going to be doing something until that day. God say, okay, uh, enough. Now you can come home. So that's my belief. I put up so much that I can, right? And that's something that I do with joy and pleasure. And again, I cannot thank you guys enough for allowing me to be here so we can have more, you know, discussion about what I believe and this many, many topic. And also one of the most important is the topic of courage. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That, that was a great, um, great introduction and telling us a bit about the things you do and who you are. Thank you so much. We are really grateful. Indeed, um, following you all this while on social media has really, really encouraged me to know that, yes, um, someone from Africa can travel and go out there and do something great. In in so many ways, it has, it has inspired me in ways you, you, you may not even <laughs> have comprehended or, or known, but yes. indeed I've really, really been um, inspired from the things you do. Thank you so much, sir. Um, mm. Also, we, we we are just coming to know you now. So also we want to know, like, what were your dreams when you were still very young? I know you had a dream when you were growing yes. up. And, uh, I think part, part of it was what took you to America. We, we'd like to know what, what really was your dream. Well, so, so before I answer the question, I would like to congratulate you also on your book right oh, thank which you is so which is which is something that uh i really really find it um impressive because young people also need to publish book we don't need to wait until we old or we have we think that we have done so big stuff before we can do it because uh, we need to tell our own story over exactly. and over again and so when i saw that you published a book and you know I, I was so proud because i know this is what we'll be doing and i'm sure from your experience from doing it it was going to encourage somebody else say you know what i saw marvin publish a book about something let me find out what it is that i am passionate about do some yeah. research on it then i can also talk about it to help other people Very so I, as growing up first my dream was to be somebody as as fluid that as that could be like i just have this dream like i wanted to be somebody right and i know everybody has that more concretely i will say i wanted to be a lawyer in my professional life i wanted to be a lawyer i wanted to practice law then um i went to school all the way to when i was in togo before i come to us i was in second year law school right 
then I come to I came to US and you know my whole plan changed. But yes, uh, my dream growing up as a young African, I wanted to be a lawyer. And the main reason why I want to be a lawyer is I feel like I can defend people. That's my childish dream. Like when I see any TV or anything that has a lawyer in in it, any show, anything particular with a lawyer, any, I'm always drawn to that. Like to be able to carry the voice of the voiceless or to be able to represent something for other people or to 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 be able to defend a cause or uh, you know an issue or bring something and that's that has always been you know this child will dream that I, I wanted to do now today looking into my adult life and my professional life well I might I might not be a lawyer like a trained lawyer who is practicing law but I became a public advocate for a successful living. I became a public advocate for defending the principle, like as a human being, you should do something with your life. You should search for a meaning and you should try or struggle to do something, then help others do that. So yeah, growing up as a young African, I wanted to be a lawyer. And I always say, I'm going to go abroad, abroad, study, do something, become something, and then help people. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, let me put up. Thank you. We that's that that's a very great dream, and I'm sure the, those that are watching us have uh, will learn so much from that. Um, knowing that you had a dream and you had to pursue it to ensure that you are doing something that 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 corresponds with your dream to mm -hmm. be an advocate and just help people, the voice to the voiceless and help people to, to liberate them from whatever captivity that they find themselves. I'm really grateful. Um, thank you, sir. We have a lot to talk about, and yes. uh, we'll just be dishing it as uh, whilst we go. Um, yes. Also, we would like to know, because your story, we'll come to your story, and your story is one that is very inspiring and, mm. and, and, and has a, a lot for us to learn from. Um, mm. We'd like to know that in life, um, uh, being tenacious, like we talked about, one of the, 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 the focal points is tenacity. Being mm -hmm. tenacious, are we supposed to be, to remain tenacious in life? Or uh, because we know as you move through, I, I'm just trying to see how I can frame that question. Because as we move through life, so many things happen, uncertainties, mm -hmm. things you didn't expect and all that. So are we supposed to allow the way life happens to frame our vision? Or we are supposed to remain tenacious through the process of life and holding on to our visions. So this is what um, I will say is about both. In life, mm. you have to be tenacious in pursuing your dream. And also you have to be flexible. Mm. And some people will say, well, it's contradictory. Actually, it's not, right? It is like a water moving. If you see any water moving through either a flat land, the water yeah. will go easily. As yes. long as long as the land is flat, the water will keep moving into that direction. As soon as that water comes into the place like a high elevation, you're going to see that water is going to go around that elevation, right? And then keep flowing to the direction of, you know, where the land and everything is. And as it is, if you have a, a dream and you form something in your mind that you would like to do, now, before that happens, you will go through many, many things. Uh, you might mm. have to face rejection, setback, delays, and you must keep trying, you know, to achieve that dream. Like I was telling you, I wanted to be a lawyer. That was yeah. my original goal. Now, when I came to U.S. and I was arrested at the airport, I faced immigration deportation. And for like four months, I was in detention. Now, during the detention... Uh, my vision was changing a little bit about, okay, what I should do in the country. Once I got released, I realized that, okay, if I want to pursue being a lawyer, it's going to take me as maybe 10 years to do that. Because first I came from French speaking country and to be a lawyer in America, 
you need to have a bachelor degree first from any college university in America and then apply for law, law school. That's the way it is. So wow. if you come from any French speaking country, meaning you have to go back to school, first of all, learn English language, then get your bachelor in, you know, some pre-law and then go to law school for another three years, then pass the bar. And then, so I saw that, that it's going to take me some time to do it. And I said, well, what can I do to kind of change, uh, you know, the, the goal that I have without abandoning my overall dream. Because what is the dream? Is the purpose to do something with your life, regardless of what it is. You have yeah. to define it. So you can't be, well, I want to be a lawyer and that's all I want to be and that's the end of it, right? You can do that, but you have to be listening to also what God is telling you the way you should move about it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to abandon certain things to go certain way because I, I'm a Christian and I believe that, yes, you can, you know, put up your dream. You can put up your goal. You can put everything. Also, it's going to depend on God to allow you to do it. So if you keep facing resistance, maybe you should look around. God is trying to point you to a different direction. And as long as you are in tune with yourself, with the purpose that you have, I'm sure you will find a better way to express yourself and make that dream happen. So, yes, in life, you have to be tenacious, tenacious in the sense of, you can't abandon your whole life because one event happened to you. Mm. You cannot just quit and be like, you know what? I'm done. I'm tired. You know, I, I'm not going to try anything. I'm just going to sit here and blame everybody or blame every situation and just quit on life. So mm. in that sense, you have to be tenacious as a person, as a human being. When you are born to the time when God called you on this earth, you have a duty to yourself first to figure it out after your parent raised you to the age of 18 or 20 or whatever age your parent done their part, the rest is up to you to figure out something meaningful to yourself. Otherwise, why would you be alive, right? Why would you be here? Why would God put you here to just complain and die? No, God knows that you will have a purpose. You will do something. You have to do something. And personally, that I believe that's the purpose of life. Sometimes people say, I just want to be happy. I don't personally believe the purpose of life is just to be happy. Happy, you know. The purpose of life is yeah. hard work. Let's face mm. it, bottom of it. I mean, even people born into the riches, if you see that, if they don't do anything meaningful with their life, at the end, you're going to find them to become addicts. Explain the wealth at some point. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So as a human being, regardless of where you find yourself at the starting point, some people have a high, already <clears throat> rich parent, great school, they begin great, no problem. They too have to figure out something. Otherwise, their life become meaningful. That they don't know exactly what it is. Or if you find yourself okay. on the other end of the scale, right, you have to struggle. So you have to be tenacious from the time you take responsibility from your parent until the time God call you. You have to be tenacious. Now you have to be yeah. flexible with the event of life, things that will happen. Mm. You have to be able to adjust. You have to be able to adapt. But you cannot just abandon life because things are not going the way you want it to go or the way you you think it's supposed to go. Wow. Wow. Thank you so wow. much. Um, Otobong. You know, like Otobong. I have just been sucking in so much um, knowledge and, um, you know, when I like it when um, so much knowledge is being shared, especially from the standpoint of experience, you know, it's something that that that's yeah. actually very experiential. So it, it sounds so real. And of all the things I had, I feel the part that really got to me was um, that actually reminded me of one of the events we had on um, December, which was about goals, that your goals should be actually very flexible. So most times you have um, ideas, you have um, visions, you have things you, you actually wanted to do. And then as you start out on your journey, you the circumstances or like some kind of events you didn't really um, premeditate just comes up. So, you know, some people are like, okay, you know, be flexible are just come up with new ideas just like you like you saw what happened you had always wanted to do law but you look at the number of years at the end of the day the major thing you wanted to achieve was you know have impact touch lives and of course maybe law was just one of those avenues and then you were very um, wise enough to be able to iterate and say you know what let me change um my trajectory so the next question is um mostly focused on the topic which is on courage you know some young people would hold on to certain things a white man once said that he feels it is intellectual arrogance to stand in a crowd of over 2,000 persons and tell everybody, don't give up. 
Because why? Don't give up becomes very cultural. There are certain areas of their people who, you know, um, it's they are in a verge in their lives where they have to give up certain relationships, they have to give up certain friendships, they have to give up certain Thank ideologies. You. So when you say don't give up, you're actually encouraging them to actually, you know what, hold on to that dream and go in that particular direction. So some people would actually define courage as you know, um, holding on to those dreams and not deciding to give up and say, this is what I've always wanted to do. I want to do it. And then, just like you, you talked about flexibility. And I, and, I, and I think the thing about flexibility is more of on the aspect of wisdom, being wise enough to understand and being, um, like being wise and also um, 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 actually understanding the times and the seasons. And then putting all this together to make a very good decision and say, okay, this is what I want to do. So, what will you define as courage? Like, what will you say, okay, if you want to define being courageous, do you think some people holding on to some of those, those um, dreams and saying, okay, I'm going to be flexible, where is the thin line between being courageous and being foolish? Like, what, yeah. what, what's actually the thin line for some people? So, on, on top of courage, you said sometimes people hold on to a specific event and or something in life, say, this is it, this is it, this is it. And like you said, you have to wise up and to understand the situation. And it, maybe that situation is telling you to look left, a little bit left or a little bit right, or to sit down and think about new way of going about the same thing, right? So for me, courage is like facing challenges without giving up. To me, that's the way I define courage, like facing challenges. So if you hold on to, if you are facing one thing and then you go about it, and you got defeated over and over and over again. Being courageous means now, you know, okay, I've been trying this thing for so many years, right? And it's not been paying up. It's not going that way. What is the possible, what is the other avenue that is possible for me? So that is courageous to me. It's like, you have to face it like, okay, I'm, I'm going to sit down and look through the result of what I've been doing and come out with a new way. To me, that's called courageous. So just saying that, oh, I'm going to just do one thing until uh, is enough, then, you know, if it's not that way, then I'm going to hold on to it at the end. To me, that's foolishness. I'll give you an example. Like when I was growing up, I don't know how I come across setting goals so early. Like I was in, in my early 20s and I, I was able, I think I read some books that was really helpful. Like the one called The Game of Life and How to Play It. So I came across this book, I think I was in maybe eight or nine or 10 grade level. When I come in, I read it, I wasn't fully understanding of what is happening, but he said you have you should formulate goal, like, you know, to, to make sure that you 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 repeat yourself, things you want to do, things you want to happen to write down your goal. So I start doing those. Now, when I got opportunity to apply to come to US, right? I was first uh, in my mind, I went for the first visa interview and I wasn't approved. That was December 31st, 2001. So in my mind, I said, okay, fine. They deny me my visa, no problem. And then I went back in 2002 and I applied again, same visa. They deny me again. And I said, well, sure. whatever, that's fine. And then I went back 2003 yeah. and then they deny me again. So now wow. I was telling myself like, okay, I tried this visa thing three times. So I'm this is coming to US, right? And I say, okay, I'm gonna try one more time next year. And if it doesn't come out, I will shift because first I wanted to go to US, period. I don't want to go any other place. I say, okay, if I try US doesn't work, I'm gonna turn my attention to Australia. And then maybe after that, UK. And I tell myself, like from the time I was 21 to all the way I'm 30, I'm gonna try go to abroad. Meanwhile, I was still in school, right? I was still in school in Lome. I was attending classes. I did not abandon none of that. I was still going oh. to my, my school. But I said, I'm going to give my, myself 10 years to apply for all this kind of visa to go abroad to do something. So I was in school, in college doing that. And then I have side business. Like I have a small cafe shop where, you know, people come do email, uh, you know, printing stuff. And then I open like a small video club. I don't know if you guys have that in Nigeria back in the days where, where you have DVDs and then you have a video club when you play video for people to come and watch it. Yeah, so I, had yeah, a, we do. So, so I collect the little money that I could and build like a, a things like a little rundown places. But I was showing video like uh, throughout the day and then people would pay me. Even though I was student, like I figured out small ways that I was making a mm. little bit living. 
at the same time, I was applying for visa. So I said, I'm going to do this visa thing until when I'm 30, it doesn't happen. By then, I know I should finish law school in Togo. I should be business savvy by then. And I will move on with my life and be in Togo. So I had like, I had like a, a, a many front open. It wasn't just like I was pursuing one thing. And yes, I will party, less I will do things. But I have, my mind is like, my 20s is my year where, I'm going to fire at any direction to figure out something. And I didn't abandon school. I didn't abandon trying small business. And I didn't abandon my, my plan to move abroad. So even though I was being defeated in the visa application, I was still like, okay, fine. I'll go. Then in 2004, I went back for the fourth time. And the finally granted the visa. I was like, oops, okay, that, that changed everything. Then I left Togo to come to U.S. to pursue the, you know, the other part of my, my dream. So again uh you you need to have a broader vision of your life because uh if you let's say life expectancy is 75 right granted god give you life from age one all the way to 75 between one and 20 usually you're going to school you're doing stuff right you haven't figured out completed stuff yet but from usually from 25 all the way to 75 you have what, like 50 years to figure out something with your life. So I say, look on the broadest perspective and don't give up on yourself. Don't abandon your dream, but you can change many ways to approach the same thing and That's make that. your dream happen in the future. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I like, I am actually in that same point in my life where, you know, um, I just um, finished um, this in college um, early last year. Um, okay. a bachelor's in um, engineering and I'm also into software development, also do blockchain and um, I, I like technology and something inside me also also has that same dream too, to actually shoot shots, you know, to different international organizations and some um, institutions and for some of them I'm actually like in the process of really understanding, okay, what kind of courses do I continue with, what do I do next and all that. Now, these are like two questions I want to um, collapse together. Um, yes. For young people, um, first of all, you know, we have black people in Africa. In, um, in um, the United States, we have a lot of black uh, people. And to be sincere, there's, there's a mindset that some of them do have. A kind of, of um, a defeatist uh, mindset, a mindset that's more like you always see yourself more as a victim every, at every single point in time. You know what? If you didn't get this, it's mostly because of my race. You know, it was my race. You won't think, first of all, okay, was I very qualified for this? So how did you overcome that kind of defeatist mindset, one? And, and then two, from your perspectives, for African youths who, who are actually um, looking at, like, um, leaving Africa to actually explore their international opportunities, um, if you are an African youth today, what would you have done differently? Because you've tested the waters, you've actually explored, you've seen a lot of things. If you were an African youth today, I wanted to make that same decision. Like, what do you think African youth today who want to shoot for international opportunities should do differently? That's the second question. The first one is, like, how were you able to overcome that defeatist mindset and really, um, you know, um, decide that this is what you want to do and not play the victim and say, okay, you know what? I'm black, I'm this, I'm that, you know. How are we able to overcome that if it's I, 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 I think I think African it's I think it's called I think it's called the slave mentality. <laughs> Some people call it the slave. Yeah, mentality. that kind of mentality. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. still hovering around yeah. the blacks. So this thing is uh is 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 real psychological affliction that we have, right? Mm. And it's not a, a a small subject and it's not uh, something easily undone because what? We have over 400 years of slavery. And then after that, we were colonized in our own country. And constantly, we've been told that we're not good enough. Uh, we are black. We know this. We know that. And this thing kind of embedded deep down in our psyche to the point where even though we were presented, we are presented with the opportunity, sometimes we self recruit ourselves and say, well, I'm not good enough. And there is a lot of work needs to be done. And this is the reason why we are putting ourselves out there, like what you're doing, what I'm doing, to show other people 
that we also can do it and we can talk about it all day long. But when a young boy can come across your story, my story later on to see, oh, this person is able to do this, maybe I will have a chance to. So that's the power of image and the power of our story and things that we are doing. So yes, it could be through education, it could be also through action. We have to realize that we are no less than other people. Life circumstances have not been fair to us, and I cannot deny it. Been exploited for so many centuries, right? Be taken advantage of. And even our system of education let us know that we are not good enough. I'll give you a prime example. How is it possible that somebody that is born in Togo, studied in Togo, will know more about French history than he knows about his own country? How is that possible? How is it possible that as African, I don't know the deep root of where my ancestor came from or how my next door neighbor, Ghanaian, are formed or what are the things that Nigerians do that we have in common? Like we don't have this thing that we teach our kid, we teach ourselves to be able to know that we also are people are valuable. So it is a deep problem. What we can do is to keep educating ourselves, putting good stories out there to let us know that we are also good for something, to remind ourselves that we are somebody, and then to keep affirming that. And it is through education, through telling our story, to action, to be able to raise that mentality. I know it's not an easy thing, right? I'll yeah. tell you an example. When I joined the U.S. Army, it's easy to just put yourself in the back corner, right, and just say, well, I'm just an African who joined the U.S. Army. I don't have much to say. But as I gradually go around, you will realize that sometimes those limitations is self-imposed. Mm. Is, is, is because you don't want to put yourself out there. You don't yeah. want to say anything. I say, I sat in a meeting where I'm the only black at the table. Wow. Mean, meanwhile, you have other people. They're giving you voices. And I'm like, so if I didn't manage on my own to get here, nobody will give me voice to even listen to what I have to say. So I know it's not a, an easy thing. And the way to overcome it is to read about what we are as a people, what we used to be as a people, yeah. to affirm that we too, we are good for something and do not give up on the identity that, you know, like I eat with my hands. Even though I sat sometimes with my American friend, I eat with my hand. They said, it's my culture, right? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not portraying that I'm better than anybody, but I just find a way to be at ease with myself, to, to, to not be ashamed that, I am who I am, right? And yeah. I came from a background, I came from a different culture. So in the diaspora, the problem is real. But also, let me tell you that there is good news in that. In, in the US, the most educated group of people, you know, immigrant is Nigerian, right? You wow. go to hospital, you see doctors and nurses and lawyers, many, many Nigerians. So we are, there is a lot of us already doing some stuff. What we are not being able to do is to communicate that and to put our good story out. So I, again, applaud, applaud you, applaud you for what you're doing, reaching out to different Thank people you. to bring over who have done something. You can next time find out a lawyer who lives in Chicago, who practice in the law in the US. Mm -hmm. You can find out a nurse who is in Tampa, Florida. You can find out somebody in California. We're happy to have I'm you sure. as a link now. <laughs> exactly. exactly because i think that's so, really interesting as you just said i just took it down now like oh, that's a, like an amazing idea to really yes, reach yes. out to blacks yes. in the united states who are yes. doing this and telling their story amazing stuff yeah yes and then put the story out there to encourage people that we too can do it we mm. too can do it and then by by the way we repeatedly do that our younger brother sister who are looking at it would be like oh okay if this guy can do it, maybe I can too. And one yeah. of the reasons why I push my story out, I, I talk about myself, I talk about things that I'm doing. My hope is if even if it's 10 people who one day come across my story and see, well, here's this guy, right? He managed to do this thing and maybe I can do the same thing too. So that's the first portion of your question. And the second one is, what advice will I give people about like youth living in Africa or vice versa? And this is where I have two responses to this. First one, immigration or migration has always been part of a human history. So we're going to move around left and right. 
People going to go abroad. People going to come home, vice versa. So yeah. if you are a young person and you find out that you want to travel abroad to gain experience, to gain knowledge, to gain education, and, you know, before you go back or do something, I'll encourage you to do it. But at the same time, do it in a way where you don't jeopardize your life. You don't die in the process because human being is very important thing, right? It you're like a human being is very critical through one human being who can maybe write a book on something can change a whole nation, you know, on a specific topic. So value yourself enough. Don't put yourself in danger where you have to die, right? To, to accomplish that. So as far as young professional African, if you have the opportunity to do it, do it. Know the reason why you're doing it. At the same time, there are people who've been in diaspora for a long time who want to go home now, right? They should, they will do, they are doing the reverse, going back there and trying to do something. I'm not part of the people who think that nobody, I mean, we should not go anywhere. How would you learn if you don't go anywhere? If you find the opportunity, I say go, right? If you have the opportunity, mm. go. But at the same time, if you haven't got the opportunity yet and you are there, look around you. See what kind of problem can you solve? What can you do to your community? What, which way can you help about anything that you're passionate about? And sometimes it might take you to go away to realize, you know, how good you have it back there. But at the same time, play your role in the time that you find yourself. If you find the opportunity to travel, to go learn something, do it. At the same time, don't just limit yourself, sir. I'm, I, if I don't travel there, there is nothing I'm going to do while I'm still waiting or I'm, I'm still around. You can still do something. Meanwhile, keep searching for an opportunity. So people will travel back and forth. People will make a reverse migration back to home. People will travel abroad. Nowadays, with technology, I'm here talking to you. Yeah. Before, it wasn't not possible. Before, for me to give a guidance, advice, share something, I have to go back home, right? But nowadays, through video, to message, to something... I can share what I believe. I can work on somebody with a project, even though the person is back home. So these are the benefits that we have today to exploit. So I'm not part of this group. I always think that all Africans who go to diaspora have to go back home to develop their country. No. If you feel like the, you have the passion for it and you think that's the way you're going to do it, you, can, you, you need to follow that. I'm not going to tell you which one is best for you. You have to listen to yourself. To say, okay, I'm ready because when a person is ready, there's nothing that can defeat you if you nothing. are ready. Nothing. But if somebody tells you something, as soon as you find yourself in a problem, you'll be like, oops, you told me so, you told me this, <laughs> and you're going to... Exactly. But if you are determined that this is my decision, you will fight for it. So I'm part of those like free willing person. If you want to do the up or down or left or right, it is up to you. But nowadays, we have tools, we have technology, you can look up stuff, you can even from anywhere that you have access to internet, you can get information to help people around you. So when you come to live in Africa, yes, if you got the opportunity, and you have a goal that you want to achieve, I would say do it. But at the same time, if the opportunity hasn't presented yourself yet, or you're trying and it hasn't happened yet, look around you, there is something you could be doing while you wait. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, just like you said, a lot about rewriting our story and presenting ourselves the way we want it to be. And exactly that will inspire much other people to light their candles as well. The grace that we have gotten so far to, just like you, the grace you've gotten to lit your candle and be an inspiration. You're trying to now ignite others and by presenting your story out there just so much you've said and I'm, I'm i'm very sure that those watching us and those that will watch this later uh just getting a lot of wisdom from what you've said so far i've really learned a lot a lot and i, I think this session alone can can become a book <laughs> yeah so much wisdom out of it that that can make a book so thank you so much um you you've said something about this question but i, I just want to reiterate i want you to reiterate and talk and re-emphasize about it um yes. you are far away in the united states of america with a very busy schedule doing a lot but you're still you still have contact with africa and um you're, you're still doing stuff in africa so i want to know what's your passion what's what's the aim of you still making sure you 
touch Africa because checking your Facebook, checking a lot of those that interact with you on Facebook and interact with your posts, many of them are Africans and many of them are learning and gleaning from your life experience and all that. So why are you still, still have a touch in Africa? So not to be pretentious uh, about anything, but we need our own heroes. We need our own people. Mm. We need our own to tell the story. We need our own to encourage each other. I've seen other races, you know, culture do it for themselves. And we have to do it, right? And, you know, when I was looking for motivation books, I haven't seen any that was written before, like long time, long time ago, right? 10, 15 years ago about any African who published their story to encourage others. And we have to do it because if I see you as you see me and we know we, we, we can understand each other, right? It, it is more easy to digest. It's more to draw easy straight. to draw straight from. Mm, yeah. in, my, in the first part of my book, I talk about how I grew up in Togo. And many Africans who contact me, they just laugh because we almost went to the same things as growing up and it relates. Yeah. So my aim is to put myself out there, even though sometimes I know our culture doesn't allow that. Say, oh, don't talk about things you're doing. Like people will be this. One. And I say, exactly. well, somebody has to do it. Somebody has to do it. And we cannot keep always looking for uh, other races that they are the model. They are they are things that the way we should be. They are things that we should look like look or up be to. like, look up to. We yeah. need our own. So again, through these messages, I'm calling on everybody regardless of your walk of life, whatever you're doing, put it out there for somebody to learn from. We are the youngest continent in the entire world. The world, yeah. And these young-minded need somebody to look up to. So if, if you are in, 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 in healthcare, engineering, media, uh, uh, agriculture, and whatever the passion you feel is, put up something good, right? Share something. Each one, teach one, because mm. that's the way we're going to change our story. That's exactly. how we're going to look up for ourselves. And then 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 50 years from now, the playing field level will be level. Like we'll be doing things that we didn't think it was possible before. Like if you come to uh, America, for instance, if you ask how many people own a land in America, they are very few. But if you go to Africa, everybody in Africa has somebody, their grandparent owned the land. Very That's true. something you need to think about 20 years Very from true. now. So we are, yes, through century of many things that happened to our continent, we have to keep putting our, our stuff out there, our small story to make an impact. So my aim is very simple, motivate, encourage, and just help other people see the light. And the biggest crisis we have is knowledge, right? Is how to do something, how to change a view because we are governed by what we believe. Mm. We are governed by what we believe that it is true. If you think of yourself that, you know, I'm nobody, of course you'll be nobody because that belief is going to take you to take no action when it comes to things that are related to you. So you have to make it, to the point where you believe things are possible for you. So my aim, again, is simple. Open our mind, get ourselves educated. Nobody is better than us, right? Today, yes, I'm in the US Army. I'm serving a foreign country. It's true, but that's how far I have to travel to gain what I know so I can bring it to my people. Say, listen, here are things that will be happening. Here are things that I think, you know, I find out that it could be helpful. I love to read and I know not everybody likes to read. So when I read a book about 200 pages and I can make five minute video about it, well, at least I'm going to help somebody who doesn't, who can read it, who can have access to that book that they Very can digest true. from whatever I said. So to help them. So my aim, educate, you know, motivate and just help somebody go to the next step. And 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, 50 years down the road, our people will be better because we have taken some action in our small way to educate, to motivate, to encourage. Yeah, thank you so much. Somebody just, just gave a comment, said, we are governed 
by what we believe. Absolutely. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's really one thing Africa really needs to, to, to look into when it comes to the young people. Our mindset, we really need to change our mindset and look at the things we believe. And uh, someone said that you are a total reflection of what is going on in your mind. And even the Holy Book, the Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so it, so it is. The heart, Very not true. the pumping machine, but the mind is what the Bible refers to. So we so are a total reflection of what's going on in our mind. So true. That's really, really, really who we are. Thank you so much. Um, I think we've had so much time spent. Uh, we'll just try to wrap up. I think two more questions and then we go. I'm um, talking about our continent of Africa. And um, um, to be to be frank, we know Africa is not really where it needs to be today. And um, so much needs to be done for it to, to look like the vision we see and, and really what we have, the picture we have in our minds for what we want it to be. Um, we want to know what role do you think young people have to play in the rebranding of Africa and the bringing and the, and the birthing of the new vision and the new Africa we all are yearning to see. What's, what's the role you think young people have to play in regards to that vision? So the, the role is, is that each single African has that responsibility, yeah. regardless of your level of education, where you live, which country you live in, it is on us to build that. So don't feel powerless, like, oh, I'm just a small town person, or, you know, who's going to hear my voice? So value what you're doing. And put it out there. Before I get mm. into the show, I was watching something on YouTube. I believe the lady is from Guadeloupe. And she said, 10, 10 months, 10 countries, her way of showing off Africa. I think that her project was in 10 months, she will visit 10 countries or she'll present 10 countries and things that are going in, right? Wow. In those countries each month to kind of talk about it. Uh, she gather information and just make a video about it and just kind of present it. Yes, nowadays, uh, media controls everything. And the image that we see in the media is the detrimental to African, many African. We don't see the good things that are happening. We don't see you know, all the advances that have been made. We still brand it as the dark continent, the continent where there is disease and all that. Meanwhile, they are coming, pillaging our resources, doing everything in the continent, right? So yeah. we too, as a young African, need to uh, present our continent and maybe this message to our leaders to have a, a 20 years plan, a 50 years plan, a 100 years plan. I read the Chinese book about the Communist Party plan. Do you know these people have up to 100 years plan that they have in storage that like in the in the next 20 years this is what they're going to do in the next 50 years this is what they're going to do so they have like a national agenda for their people for their culture for things that they want to do so they have it at the national level at the same time every person know that this is what they need to do so for young african if you can watch this video later or you're watching it now the task is on us us three on this screen that you're seeing, we're doing our part. Like, we're presenting the information. We're saying things that we uh, either learn or experiences here to help you out. I wish back in 2003, 4, 2002, when I was trying to do this, I could find somebody that looked like me putting out advices and guidance and, you know, mm. how to do things to do, things not to do, and all that. That will help me in my journey. Since I couldn't find it, so I, we decide now to do it. So I encourage you, don't downplay yourself. Don't look at yourself like, oh, I'm just a small town person. I don't have this degree. I don't do this. Like, I have a degree in international relation and, and you know, computer science, right? But yeah. yet I publish a book. Before, they'll be like, who are you to publish a book? Like, who gives? But I grab it. <laughs> I say, true. you know what? I'm going to put on my story. It, yeah. Even if there is a, a grammatical error in it, I don't care. My yeah. goal is to share my story. If Just somebody find me that I didn't mm. put S here or W there, that's fine with me. But as mm. long as you can understand my message, right? Exactly. You are you are good to go. And yeah. again, who am I to defend somebody who came to colonize my great parent with their language? <laughs> so now I'm gonna use that language as a weapon, right? Yeah. And that's where we can take out of it. 
Exactly. Because don't English judge me by the language. No, no, <laughs> don't do that. Because now, yeah. let's use that to advance our people. Let's use that, that to it. promote ourselves, to promote our culture, to promote who we are. So to young African, I don't know where this message will find you, but just know that you have a role to play. I have a role exactly. to play. And yeah. I don't exactly. need to be a president to do it. I don't need yeah. to be this one to do it. Whatever level I find myself, I owe it to myself and the people who look after me that I will plant a tree that I know well that I'm not going to sit under. Mm. That it's okay. And yeah. that's exactly the clarion call of leadership. Yes. There you go. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know we've taken much of your time. Um, so uh, whilst we ask, um, we just have one more question to go after this one. Um, we know a lot of persons follow you on social media and all your accounts because uh, I think one of the reasons why some of those persons follow you is because they they also have a vision and a dream to join the army, the U.S. Army, and also become what you've become, how you've excelled in that particular area. They see themselves in you and they want to become that. Uh, uh, I don't know if you have any advice for them and um, whatever you, you like to share with those that are in that line it, it is true that many people reach out to me how they can join how they can be like me and one thing i, I can say is nobody can be like anybody right mm. we all have our destiny yeah, and some people that have been following me for years now got a chance to come to us and i talked to them some of them will join the army some of them will continue with their education some of them will not but the majority is like i don't think majority who follow me will do it but it doesn't mean that you cannot be something on your own term wherever you find yourself like at the beginning we don't choose where we are born and we don't choose how or you know what our life eventually we're going to become but if you find yourself anywhere right do your part so if you follow me just because you want to join the U.S. Army, I know how appealing that is. And, I, you know, I cannot say don't have that dream. But at the same time, there is other dream out there. Look at your situation today. What can you do? And down the road, if you get a chance to join the U.S. Army, God bless you or, you know, may all be with you. But don't yeah. just limit it as, okay, this is the only thing that is possible for me. And if I don't do it, then my life is over. So, mm. again, for those people who just follow me to just be, you know, one day like me. You can't be like me, and I can't be like you because everybody DNA is 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 unique. It's like different. everybody is, yeah. is different. So exactly. maybe our path will cross where I can mentor you to become U.S. Army member too. Maybe, maybe not. But at the end of the day, know that you have a calling in your own life. God mm. put you here for a reason, for a exactly. purpose. Your task is to discover that, and mm. you know. Pick up your cross and head to the hill because that's what we are here to do. All of us, you need to pick up something and go for there. I find myself doing it. I wasn't coming to the U.S. trying to join the army. That wasn't the plan. But as life shifted me, I was adapting to the point where I find it because God knows better that that's where I can sell. So if my page catch your attention because I'm the army, the question you need to ask yourself is, what is God's purpose for me? What is, you know, the calling that I have? What God put me here on earth to do? And what can I do? And if it is happened to be the U.S. Army, God bless you. If not, don't despair. Don't think that your life is over. Everybody have their calling. And I pray that God will help you discover yours. And then you can follow your own path. And then let your story also be shared. We There is so many things in life that we all can do and excel at. Whatever it is yours, I pray sincerely that God help you find it. Man, man, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, this this question is is can I say off the hook? Uh, yes. But I just want to bring in it. Uh, we we also discovered that uh, is it your daughter is also a part of the U.S. Army as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We, we 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 want to know was it that you talked her in to join or she had a vision and liked what you do and decided to <laughs> to be so, a part of it. So I think one test of. Uh... Uh, uh, maybe successful parenthood is for your kid to find their own way, regardless of what they do. Like, mm. so my daughter's story joining the army 
first she she didn't express any interest growing up that oh she wanted to join the army so when she was in high school i keep asking what do you want to do like what do you so i constantly ask her what do you want to do what do you want to do so she said well you know maybe i should go to college and do something so she went to college after graduating from high school for two years and then i keep telling her yeah see if you join the army you can do this you can do that or if you follow this path too, you can. So it's always a dialogue between myself and her. Oh. And at one point, she's the one who comes to me like that. I think I'm ready to join now. And I said, oh. well, that's it. That's it. Because she, I preach so much around me. And that's my style of parenting or friendship. Like I preach around me, whatever I find. And I'm doing that is working. I'm going to share it with people around me. Like I'm just spreading out whatever I got because hey, somebody will pick it up. It's just like uh, the sower, right? You go around sowing seed. Some yeah. will fall into the ground that is fertile. Some will fall into to the side of the road, whatever. So for my daughter, it's like, you know, we have a conversation what she want to do. I was helping her to form her own vision. And finally, one day she's like, you know what? I'm going to try the army for four years and see if I like it. And then if I don't like it, then, you know, well, fine. Well, she joined the army and she, as soon as she finished her basic training, she's like, you know what? I love this. I'm going to stay in the army for the next 20 years. I was like, oh, that was quick. But she went to become a paratrooper, jumping out of an airplane, do stuff. Right now she's stationed in Alaska. And we didn't talk much about it in the past. I, I just spread like what I have as information. And I guess uh, constantly saying it, uh, it helped her make her own decision. And I think that's the way, uh, you know, we should do it. Because sometimes it's like you have a good information. You want everybody around you to do it. But you realize not everybody's going to be able to do that. So your job is just keep spreading the information. I have friends who are not in the Army, right, who are doing other stuff, who are successful at it here in the U.S. And I have friends who join the Army, too, just because I joined the Army. Are people who I know that they join and then come out and do other stuff. So, yes, I'm very proud that my daughter is following my footsteps. But I just literally help her, you know, make that decision because my preaching is everybody have a calling. You have something, that's why you're here. What is it, right? So, again, uh, it is with pride that, you know, I know that she's doing the same thing. But ultimately, it was also her decision to do it. And I'm, I'm happy that she's doing it. Well, wow, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm really grateful for you deciding to just share that. It wasn't part of it, but you decided to, to speak about it. I'm sure so much I've learned about learned from that. Thank you so much. Um, um, sorry, uh, I have uh, one more question that um, I will share, then we'll, we'll, we'll call it a day. Uh, yes. This question is about, sorry, I'm trying to get something out of here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, you are you, you are a, a security expert, and um, you are a security expert, and we all know that um, you you are a security expert in America, and all, that makes you a security expert. We can say, and yeah. um, we know you just like the story you shared. You went to the U.S. and you you entered uh, you you went to the jail. You were jailed for some time because of some misunderstanding that happened along the way. Mm. And um, later you came out and then you still pursued your dream and followed it up to who you are today. Mm. And we all know that one of the challenges that Africa faces today is the issue of security. Security. And uh, I, I, I've heard of some stories of some Africans that went to America and maybe they were jailed for one issue or the other. They came out. When they came out, they went into drugs and did a lot of things, social vices and all that. And also going back to Africa, we know that's one thing that's really, really destroying the lives of youth. We talk about drugs and all that, and you see them. And, you know, drugs and crimes are two friends. Yes. You can't separate them. Yeah, yes. so the moment they go into drugs and, and all social vices, and crime and there's a lot of things that is destroying our, by our nation back in Africa. So what finally what advice can you give to young people based on that as well and generally as, as a summary, what advice can you give to young Africans? 
So if you if you live in US America, or Canada or many European country, the thing is if you have a problem with you know either drug or you went to jail for any crime related to drug and all that, you basically ruin your life, your opportunity in the future. So for young African living in a diaspora, uh, be really careful, right? I know many, many African parents trying to do a good job educating the kid to stay away from drugs, to stay from crime. Because once you get into that cycle, it's not easy to get out and you can ruin your whole chances. For instance, if you have certain drug or crime related to drug and, you know, they are felony in the U.S. here, you can no longer work for either local government or federal government or any, that, any job that is, you know, in, in those areas. And then you're going to be so limited because you're going to have a, a tough time because you are a convicted felon. So for African living diaspora, it's something that you should completely stay away from. Now, when you come to when you come to youth in Africa, I think majority is either education or poverty or combination that lead most of them to to take that road. Now, what can we do? Then they keep educating ourselves, educating our young people. Like if you get on the life of drug, I know it's simple. It's very easy to say, oh, just stay off drug, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people need. Uh, uh, a little guidance. People need to maybe uh, uh, somebody to mentor them, somebody to talk to, somebody to care for them, so they don't mm -hmm. fall into those stuff. So yeah, we we need a family tie to be you know revigorated. We need community tie to be revigorated. I know for sure that growing up in Africa, like uh, the area I grew up in, if I do something that is not approved, like a neighbor can can beat me up and they'll report it to my parents. Say I did something. I don't know if that still happens. It's like it's like a whole area raising a kid. If they see you doing something that you're not supposed to do, they're gonna beat you up and report your parent. Your parent will Very beat you true. up twice. So I don't know if those still happen. True. But we need those community to help again. Oh. Is it, it, it just it sometimes it doesn't take much, right? To tell a kid, you know what, you can do better with your life. And if you find a kid that is that without any guidance, provide it to them. Let's help each other. The person doesn't have to be your family member immediately. So if you can tell them, don't get on this road. And I, I pray that we can have a community that will stand together, educate ourselves about you know, the issue related to drug. And for instance, I say in the diaspora, if you are a young person and you get messed up with the crime or drug and all that, you literally just ruining your own life in, in the diaspora. They will make sure that you never get into you know, anything that you know, will advance you. So, uh, your chances will be for success will be very limited because you are convicted felon for crime and drugs. So for our young people, the message is clear. Try to do something meaningful with your life, right? Trying to build a, a good life and you don't need drug for that. And I'm calling on all each of us. Just look around, see somebody you can help with your advice, somebody you can mentor, even if you have to do it for free. Just know that you will doing it for somebody who will not get into the wrong track. And at the end, we can all build a community. I know this alone will not eradicate the problem because it's deeper than that. But yeah. let's do our part. Let's yeah. let's see what we can help. Even if it's one person, that's one person that is not going to go in the other direction. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We are really grateful. I know I'm taking much, much of your time. Um, thank you so um, much. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Um, Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for getting that. Well back. Okay, uh, we, are, we are going to call it a day now. I can see uh, one of our mentors here in Cyprus, Professor Akiola, he's online and he has been the one uh, dropping some comment. Thank you so much, sir. We honor your presence. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, sir. We are really, really grateful. We are going to let you go now. Um, we thank you for your time and everything you do. You talked about your book. So where can we get your book for those that watch, that are watching now or will watch later? Where can we get your book? So my book is either available on Amazon. And for the last year alone, I put up a link to people can download for free, uh, but the link cannot expire. So now if people go on my page, they can either WhatsApp me or email me. I have a free PDF that I'm literally just letting people download and read about it. But if yeah. somebody want to buy, buy the copy, they can do it on Amazon if they have access to it. So I do it mainly to help people in Africa because I know Amazon doesn't deliver in Africa and all that. There's so many stuff to do to it. Yeah, so true. most of the time, if people send me a message on Amazon, uh, on WhatsApp, just say, you know, need a PDF version of the book. I can send it to them. They can read. The goal is to share the information. The goal is to spread it. The goal is to help each other. 
if we figure out already our life, our job now is to help people come in after us. And then every generation will build on the other to the point where 20, 50 years down the road will be good. Yeah. Again, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Marvin, for this great opportunity for sharing this. It's been a pleasure and honor. And I'm definitely looking out and the I'm future definitely looking to see if we can do to see if we can do if we can do any event thank together. You so much. If we can do any event thank you. Together. Well, thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. I'm really grateful. We are really grateful. Really grateful. Thank you yeah, so really much grateful. for coming. Oh. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Um, I think we are going to let you go now. So, uh, All right, okay. guys. Thank you again. Talk time. to you next time. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. You Bye. too. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, wow, that was a great that was a great session. Um, so much has been said, and I know so much has been learned as well. I, I I myself have learned a lot from today's session of the unmute yourself, and I'm grateful that we've come to the end of the session for today. Um, what did you learn? That's the question I'm gonna ask you for those watching now and those that will watch later. What did you learn? What did you take from this session? that um, you can take home with and can help to reshape your life. Um, it's not just that we show up here every month, but to be ensure that you get a value that will transform your life. I want to say a big thank you to everybody that has joined us so far. Everybody who has seen your comments. Thank you, Professor Akinola, for your support and always being there. Thank you, every other person that has joined us. We have um, God's Will, Zowu, we have Joy and Barry, we have uh, Dekai Scott. Thank you, everybody that have joined us so far. And those that will still watch this video, we, 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 we hope you've gotten a value that will stay with you for the test of time. Um, Oti, let's hear from you. Oti, so how was the session for you before we close? Oops. Okay, so I think, um, I think, uh, the I think, um, Captain, this is as I'm truly said so, 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 so much today. It's just about the fact that um, anytime we as human beings, you know, decide to do something, and once that um, mindset is there, and it's all about taking courage to actually say, okay, this what this is what I want to do, and um, if we are bold enough to actually believe in ourselves, those things are very possible. No dream is too big enough. You say, oh, this dream is bigger than me. Everything is actually very possible. Who would have thought that maybe um, a French, um, um, someone from a francophone country. In Africa, um, it took a little one day be walking at the Pentagon, would have thought of that. So you see, um, it's just oh, a matter of years. So there are some things we don't look at and we think it's just impossible. If, if we can think it, then it's actually possible. So what I actually thought of, you know, putting humans on mass and it's already becoming very possible by day. So um, it's just amazing. It's just to go home, you know, reflect on all these possibilities and actually as young people, Think about things that have always been some of the things that we call fantasies, like dreams. These are things that are very possible, and we just need to think, look at it, strategize, get um, the right information, and then get mentors, and uh, we'll be we we we'll all be on the journey um, towards achieving it. So um, for me personally, it has been more like putting my life in perspective because I'm also someone who has also been a very big dreamer too. So it's um, the story is very 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 relatable. And I think a lot of persons also relate with everything that we've been talking about today. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, brother. Um, I just, I want, to come just to want to... Yeah, and also, here. Komi, thank you so much for all you do. do thank you. I just want to say thank you so much for what you do with um, 360, mm -hmm. you know, your passion for young people and the people you reach out to on the network. And uh, I, I, of course, we know in-house we have a lot of plans for young people. But also knowing you personally as a friend, I think I just need to make it out there. I also say it very publicly, you know, that passion for young people is not just something you do because you just want to do, but something you're doing because there's a calling, you know. Um, as Mandela says, so um, that sometimes um, it falls upon a nation to be great, or or or, or it falls upon a people to be great. So there's a call of responsibility to actually, you know, stand up and say this is what we want to do. And I really also want to um, appreciate you for um, being courageous enough to um, take on that journey. And I'm also excited to actually also be in this roller coaster of a journey and looking forward to achieving better goals on the continent too. Thank you also thank for what you did. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you so much. You know, you know, I appreciate you and I always appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for just being there, for being a team and just supporting, understanding the vision and seeing that 
it becomes all that it that it should be. Thank you so much, brother. I'm grateful. And for everybody watching us from Africa, whatever country you're watching us from, I just want you to know that your dreams are valid. There's nothing you, you think that you can do that you cannot do. And that is why we, all, we, we brought him to share his story with us so we can relate and know that you can rise from the very least of backgrounds to the greatest and the highest pinnacle. All you need to do is be focused and get a lot of clarity that will help you on your journey of purpose. So I think we're going to call it a day now. We've, we've been here for, for quite a while now. So we're going to end it here right, right now. So thank you very much. And hope to see you, to see you next month. Next it's really month. going to be exciting, right, right. exciting, exciting right. next month. We have so have much that, so is, coming much up that up is coming up next month. And don't next miss. And don't sure you stay good. Sure you stay good. good. 360 Leadership Network on, on Facebook. And also 360 Leadership Network on YouTube. And so much is coming up that will bless you. Have a wonderful night rest or a wonderful afternoon wherever you're watching from a wonderful morning stay blessed and god bless you thank you